Yes. First of all, we have a bunch of customizing settings we must check, starting with the transaction code OMEV. And here we first of all need to set the consignment info record to active. You know that we can utilize purchasing info records for normal purchase orders, as I've shown you in one of my other videos. However, there is also the opportunity to utilize so-called consignment info records. And this is one of the prerequisites for our consignment process. So you make sure that the radio button here is set to consignment info record active and then save. In my system, this is already done. Next off, we navigate to the transaction code slash NSPRO, go to sub reference IMG. And then over here, we have the node called production. Click on this one, go to material requirements planning, then navigate to master data, and then navigate to define special procurement type. And here it's important that you assign the special procurement type 10, which is for consignment, to the different plants you're utilizing when creating purchase orders. So in my example here, plant 001. And this you can just do via new entries or even via the copy button. This is pretty straightforward. Let's actually look at this entry, double click on this one. And here you can see I defined for my plant the special procurement type 10, which is for consignment. Then I indicated here with the F that my material is procured externally and not in-house as we receive it from the supplier. And then there is the special procurement indicator K to indicate that we are dealing here with a consignment to more precisely state how we received the material. And that's basically it. So make sure you use the special procurement type 10, then the procurement type F for external procurement. And then here we define that we use the consignment process. Next off, we must ensure that the special procurement type is also assigned to the material we are about to procure. So therefore we navigate to slash N MM02. If we already have a material, let me just open mine, select the view MRP2 for your plant, and then make sure that the special procurement indicator is set to 10, which is the one for consignment. And also the procurement type for sure should be set to F as we are procuring the product externally. Next off, we will create the consignment info record. Therefore, we navigate to a transaction code slash N ME11. We provide the supplier, the material, our purchase organization, plant, and then we select the info category consignment. In the general data, we don't really need to do anything. So go to purchase organization data one. And over here, despite the plant delivery time, the purchasing group and the standard quantity, which are mandatory fields, we need to include our net price because this is the price that will be derived once we post the goods issue, not the goods received. So once we withdraw a certain amount of our consignment stock, the prices set here in the consignment info record will apply. And then this info record can be saved. Last but not least, we should configure the automatic account assignment. So therefore we navigate to transaction code slash N O B Y C. And over here we need to make sure that three different settings are maintained. First of all, for the transaction KON, there we have it, the consignment payables. For our chart of accounts, we need to make sure that one account for the consignment payables is stored over here, which is for sure a balance sheet account stating our liabilities that we have against this particular vendor who delivers us the materials. Next off, we have the transaction AKO, that's AKO, so expense and revenue from consignment material consumption, double click, and here also provide the debit and credit account accordingly. In my case, this is for valuation class 3000. This is the valuation class, which is linked in our material master data under the accounting one tab. And those are for sure expense and revenue accounts accordingly from the consumption of the consignment material itself. So once we consume it. Going back, last but not least, we for sure also have to configure GBB, so the offsetting entry for the inventory posting, double click. And here it's important to utilize the general modification indicator VBR. And then again, our valuation class, which is also stored in the material master under accounting one. And this is basically it. So by now we have activated the consignment info record. We have then created a special procurement type for consignment and linked it to our material. Then we created the consignment info record itself. And then we also configured the automatic account determination for the consignment payables, the expense or revenue from the consignment material consumption, and also the offsetting entry for inventory posting over here. Now it's time to actually test the process. Therefore, we navigate to transaction code slash N ME 21 N to create our purchase order. Now we create our purchase order with our vendor, our purchase organization, group and company code. 
And now it gets interesting. So first of all, we insert our material over here. It is really important to enter the item category, which is in our case K for consignment, as we can also see over here. K is for consignment processes. And then we hit enter. We provide our plant, the quantity, let's say six, a storage location, and that's basically it. So you may have noticed that the net price over here is now grayed out. This is because when we create a purchase order, we do not include the net price yet. As the only thing that will happen is that the material is being transferred to our plant and storage location combination. And that's it. It will still be in the so-called consignment stock. And only when we withdraw material later on, it will be priced. We will see that also. Now we will save the purchase order and take the number. Next off, let's assume that we now receive the goods. So we need to post a goods received via transaction code slash N M I G O. That's slash N M I G O. Over here, we select goods received from purchase order and insert over here our purchase order number. You can see the quantity is here six. We say that's okay. So we received six and then we post. You can see the material document has been posted. Let's now inspect the document. We go to display material document. The one we just created is already stored over here. Execute. And then we go to document information. And over here we go to FI documents. And as you can see, the system prints no subsequent documents found in accounting. This is because as of now, only the stock was transferred to our plant and storage location. It's still in the consignment stock. So legally, the materials still belong to our vendor and not to us. This is why we have a so-called non-valuated goods receipt. So we just record an increase in the quantity basis, in this case, an increase of six units. However, we do not record the value of those units. As of now, they are still in the consignment stock and we only record them on a value basis once we consume material from the consignment stock. And then the financial documents will also be created. Next off, let's now assume that we actually consume a portion of the materials from the consignment stock. So therefore, we stay in the Migo transaction actually. We just need to go to goods issue and R10 other. Then open the details over here and now provide our material 671, the quantity. So let's assume we consume three kilograms in this case, where first of all, you can see here the movement type 201. Let's actually display this. 201 is the consumption for cost center from consignment stores. So we are now directly consuming from the consignment storage to a cost center. Nevertheless, we also need to provide over here our special indicator. In our case, that's K for consignment. This is because we want to manage our stock, our consignment stock separately from other stock in the system. And therefore we need to identify this here as a consignment stock. Then we insert our plant and the storage location. You can see a new tab now, which is called partner. This tab is because we also need to tell the system from which partner we are consuming the consignment stock because consignment stock is always managed on a combination of storage location and partner. So we include our vendor over here. Last but not least, we have the account assignment in our case, a consumption to cost center. So we include our cost center over here and that's basically it. Now we can post our goods issue. You can see that material document ending with 544 has been posted. Let's display this now. Go to document info, FI documents, accounting documents and over here we can now see the financial posting. So we have here for sure a debit to the consumption account, which is an expense account from the perspective of GL accounts for sure, as we consume the material. And we have a credit to the payables consignment account, which is a balance sheet account for our liabilities against the vendor. By the way, there's also another option that we do not consume directly from the consignment stock, but we could also first transfer to our stock and consume from there. And then the financial entries would look a bit different. We can always display the stock we have left via slash N M B 54. That's M B 54. For our material and plant, we click execute. And here we can now see that out of the six pieces that we purchase in total, three pieces are left, which are evaluated by 100 euro per piece. So we have a total value of 300 left. So now the only thing left is to create an invoice. Normally this is done for instance on a monthly period and there we would only need to execute a certain program. This we can access via transaction code slash and MRKO. That's MRKO. And now we can settle the consignment process for our specific supplier, the plant and also our material. 
we deselect here the pipeline process as we are in a consignment process. Then we have two options here for processing, either display or settle. I advise you to first always click on display to view what output the system would post to. Settle would mean that the system would automatically settle and create the invoices. So here we hit on enter. From our process, you can see that this is this line over here. The system would settle the three withdrawn pieces for a total value of 300. And then over here, this one I created back in the days. So in past I have also withdrawn eight pieces for 800. This looks fine. So now we click on settle and you can see the two lines have been settled automatically and successfully. Also, you can see over here, one invoice document has been generated for both of the lines. So let's actually display over here. And here you can see the financial entries, which would be a debit to the payables consignment and a credit to the vendor account. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. If so, make sure to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.